So what could possibly have happened to the cast of Bread since the show finished in 1991? Well, we just don't know. But what we do know is that Mar Boswell has ended up here, at the Theatre Royal in Windsor. Let's go inside and have a chat. Well, Jean Boat, welcome to Scene on 7 and WMTV. Hi, thanks for asking me on. Well, tell us, first of all, have you had any difficulty in shaking off the character of Mar Boswell? with which you've been associated. Uh, quite. And although we didn't, haven't made any programs since about 1991, I think it was, uh, it was quite a long time ago, um, it is difficult. I was just standing in my house today um, talking to my secretary, and um, a man just passed by with his children and recognised me and waved through the window and brought his kids round for an autograph in my village where I live. So um, wherever I go, and even here in Windsor where I am now in this play, people stop me and say hello, which is great, because they, they liked her, obviously, thank goodness. If they hadn't liked her, well, that might have been a problem. <laughs> but anyway, um, I suppose it's, uh, immediately I went to Chichester after we'd finished recording the last series uh, and the tour. We did a tour of Bread, of course. We did the Christmas show in London of Bread with David Pugh. And um, uh, so it went on for a long time. And then, of course, we went on to uh, cable with, with the series, the whole of the series has been shown for the last th three years, mm -hmm. has right to its last episode. So it hasn't left me alone at all. But I have played different roles on stage. I did have a very, very busy career before I hit television. The first 10 years of my life was all in the theatre, and that's why, it's why it's so exciting to be at Windsor. It just reminds me of those days when I was beginning my career in theatres that did exist like this one, where they actually build the sets in the dock and they make the costumes upstairs. And in fact, on the day of the production here, they actually got together and made me two costumes, just like that, <laughs> because my, the ones that had come from the costumers went right, and they just set to and made them. And those sort of theatres, I think there's not a handful left in the country like Windsor, which is quite remarkable. And there isn't one that actually runs as a commercial organization. Although I do say, we're looking for sponsors. Um, we do the bar doing downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But do you miss Fred? Do you miss the cast? And uh, I see the... them all the time. We were talking just now about Graham Bickley was here in this theater doing a concert a week last Sunday. He went straight back into musicals from whence he came. And what was so marvelous about Graham when we replaced our first Joey, Peter Howitt, um, he'd never heard of Bread at all, uh, and Graham. And he was very famous for his performances in West End musicals, has a wonderful singing voice. So he tr popped along to the audition because he'd just finished in a musical, you see. And he didn't know what he was letting himself in for, did he? So when they said, yes, will you play Joey? He really didn't understand what that meant to the public of England, taking over the number one pin-up boy of the time, you might say, which Joey character was. Uh, and it's really, I mean, knocked him backwards, I think, <laughs> when he realized what a responsibility, how awful that was for him. He was terribly brave, and he uh, got away with it, and uh, we went on for another three years with him, mm -hmm. which was great, and he was wonderful. But I do keep in touch with them all. Um, with Kenneth, Grandad, and, and uh, Victor McGuire's just done a play, and Jonathan Morris, and, and Melanie Hill. I mean, I, I, I keep in touch with everybody. In fact, I was just talking to them this morning. Mm -hmm. And what about Brighton Bells? What's happened to that? Well, we did 10, and I think they showed five or six. And of course, in com it was the very first comedy that commercial television had embarked upon, first light entertainment comedy, sitcom. And they were expecting viewing figures of in the region of 12 million or something, which we had got for the pilot. So when we only came in at seven and eight, they thought this isn't going to work. However, so they took us off and said, we'll show them next year in a different slot. Well, obviously it's the wrong time. So we haven't heard any more about that. But I think they've learned now that it's not so easy to get 12. I don't know of any BBC comedies that get 12. Seven to eight is seven quite Seven to eight is very respectable. And so I was a bit, <laughs> Put out about that. I think they. Pa I felt they panicked a bit, and that they should have given it another little run to see if it indeed caught on. We thought it was rather super, but you can't tell. You don't know what they like, do you? <laughs> <laughs> have you any other television jobs lined up? Well, um, it's very difficult to pick another cherry. You know, I thought that was a bit lucky to find another comedy series like Brighton Bell so soon after Bread. And I think you have to wait and just 
take anything on that comes along. I mean, I'm, I'm writing one or involved with devising one with Alexandra Bastida, um, an idea that we've evolved, which we hope will come to fruition. Um, and you want to sort of take things in hand a bit and start thinking up ideas. They're desperate for new comedy, I think. Um, it's, a, it's the most difficult part of programming to find something that works, something that catches the public's imagination. So you've just got to keep trying. Well, writers keep finding that themselves. Most famous writers sort of put, write new shows, they don't work. And I've worked it out, I think about one in four is a smash hit for, for a well-known comedy writer. Perhaps one in three at the most. And they usually have two or three series, which are not quite as, don't quite catch on mm -hmm. to the public's imagination. There's so, always going to be the old turkey. There's the old turkey. And so <laughs> I'm, I'm having a go at trying to write, well, not the turkey, but it probably will be. But we'll have a go. We'll have a go. I'm sure it'll be a great success. <laughs> so tell us briefly about Arsenic and Old Lace, which well, you're Arsenic and Old Lace, I suppose it's the most famous comedy ever written, but people forget about it forget what the story is until they start sitting in the seats, I think, and then you hear the murmurs, oh, yes, oh, yes, that's right. Because it's about two sweet old ladies who really feel their mission in life is to relieve old men from the misery of their existence. And uh, so when anyone comes along and says they're very lonely, they'll offer them some elderberry wine and then, you know, let them gently go to sleep. And so then their brother, Teddy, um, he sort of helps them to bury the bodies very gracefully with the full service of their religion. And of course, eventually, it catches up with them and they all end up in a mental home. <laughs> 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 and I, this, man, this man who wrote it, Joseph Kesselring, he wrote many, many plays from the turn of the century. And this is the only one um, which he, he wrote in 1940, I think, in, in America, that caught on. And he has not had a success since, but it's earned him and his estate anyway, millions. It's funny that, isn't it, how a writer has one play that works and you'd think you'd be able to repeat it. But that does remind me of television series. If you could have a perfect formula, if you knew exactly what the answer was, well, there wouldn't be a turkey on television, would there? That's right. <laughs> but this is, it is a wonderful play. And we're, we're surrounded with wonderful actors. My co-partner in crime is Josephine Tewson, who's just been playing Mrs. Bucket's neighbor on uh, BBC. <laughs> and is a wonderful, wonderful actress, and it's been a great thrill to me. She's a terrific disciplinarian and keeps me on my toes. Stephen Pacey, I started as a child actor, um, uh, and is well known for just, a, I mean, he's got the largest credits of all of us, I think, and he's, he's absolutely marvelous. He reminds me terribly of James Stewart. And then we have a wonderful bloke playing Teddy Gorroli, and he's absolutely brilliant. I mean, it is a very, very, very strong cast, and, and the audiences are loving it. A family show? It is a family. I've seen little kids out there because it's so ridiculous. You can't believe it's possible. Um, so that they laugh too. Uh, and it's been packed out so that it's a marvelous theater, this. It's so original. But they have a very, very clear idea of the things they like and, and um, like to see. It's a good fun, a good laugh. Um, they come here to be entertained, and they make everyone feel so comfortable. It must be the, the nicest theatre in the country, the <laughs> sweetest staff, and the loveliest tea shop, and the nicest cakes. And what more do you want? I say, I'll stay here forever. I think you're definitely in the good books I'm definitely, I'm definitely in their good books. I want to stay here forever. <laughs> well, Jean Boat, thank you very much indeed. You're here until the 30th of April. 30th, yeah. We'll yes. all come and see you in our droves. Oh, please, yes, please. We need the money for the uh, new bar downstairs. <laughs> so I believe. Thank you. <laughs>